And I'm just going to, I'm not trying to do anything at all other than just show you colors and I'm going to try to build up a surface here. Okay, and let's just drag a little just to... Okay, now I'm going to... There's different ways of producing a clean edge already, or a textured edge. I cut some tape and just, just, just doing some random stuff and let's go with I move this over here and that's that one. I leveled this table because at home I didn't level it first and everything was kind of down. <laughs> so, so, so hopefully it'll stay there. So one of those blocks would last a really long time. It would. It would. So instead of having to mix it in the cans, the, the, the crystals are already the beeswax just and the demore together. Mm -hmm. and, you just and you can add you can add a lot of this and make it super transparent or oh, that's what I not much. Yeah. About how are you measuring? Like obviously you've got a, a sense of how much you um, want, and it's just yeah. Okay. Um, the transparent ones are different than the opaque. The opaque are actual particles, so you're just spreading apart the particles. Okay. So let's just draw something across. Probably should have done one edge and then another edge. Did I know? Okay, I just did that lightly so I'm not afraid to go over it just a little bit because mm -hmm. it was light. And I think that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to fuse this. The fun part. I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Start this in. I start. I start this out on high, and when I get when I get the surface warmed, then I'll turn it down on low. But right now, I'm not really trying to hold any design, so I'm going to try to be fast, so you all can get your hands and try it. And uh, as soon as you see the shine, it's fused. And since I fused well my bottom layer. I don't have to worry about the little bubbles. I mean, they can be texture if I want them. Okay, here's where I've got the colors kind of blended. And you can see that. Let me just push it around just to show you what can happen. Or I can just be careful with it and hold it. I'll bounce it like this, and that helps me keep some control, too. So see the difference between this side and that side? Yeah. Um, let me see it like you have to fuse it every time you put a layer every on Every layer has every to be layer. fused. I'm going to test the heat on my arm, which only takes a few seconds. That's <laughs> <laughs> good enough for that. And let's finish off with... What do we do? Let's just put some of this on here. I'm going to pull this up, and we've got straight, a straight or a jagged line. You can make your own stencils. <laughs> okay, and let's, uh, I tend to like fans and flats, that's just what I like, but I'm going to try around here and quickly. This is, this has been really good for me because I'm just so detail oriented. Oh, I would spend maybe 40 to 60 hours on an oil painting, that's a typical, you know, um, 16 by 24, whatever, but with this, I'm down to maybe 10 to 20 hours per, because I still go in and work, work, work. But, you know, I've seen people do paintings in half an hour. No. Uh, okay, that's, and while well, that's fused, and I'm wanting to build up a lot of layers, so, because I want to do some inscribing. So I'm going to start trying to get things thick here. Some more, oops, i got to remember to put these here. This is so nice, I love this. So what do you do at home to keep your brushes warm if you didn't have any of I, I don't. I just, just lay them. Oh, yeah, just lay them there. It. Yeah, you don't want to leave them in the pot because then it starts heating the glue that's on here. And if you can see, these are just kind of just on the edge of the metal. Mm -hmm. And metal retains the heat. So you wouldn't want to touch that metal. It would be hot. And then one more layer, and then I'm going to start inscribing and scraping. That's what I'm really wanting to show you. But I need to have it pretty, pretty thick to do that. 
if I kept just one layer and started inscribing, when I start scraping, I'd scrape off my incision. So it helps to just have something thick on there. Okay, if you look, when you're fusing, when you look down, if you see any really dull areas, that means it's not fusing enough. So go back and hit it. Do you ever over fuse and do it too much? Or? That's why I said don't fall in love with it. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> it won't be there if you do that. Um, okay, let me show you another tool while I have it to this point. They have these little heated... Heated tools. This one's called a horn, and you can just do so much with it. Um, you can come in and it'll, it kind of does all these little textures, which is just really, you can take the tip and kind of do things with it. It just gives you more textures. Um, they also have um, a flat little flat iron. It gives you a different kind of surface, and you can do really sharp edges with it. Um, and then they have this little stand to put it on. <laughs> so it doesn't lay down and burn anything. So that does some really interesting textures. Okay, since I've done that, and actually that did some inscribing, I'm going to go ahead and take one of my tools. I'll just use my favorite tool, why not? And uh, let me put it down. And so I'm just going to scrape. I'm just doing some random things here. Oh, excess stuff you scrape off, I always keep a little pot to throw that in. Because you can later, even though it's a mixture of colors, when you need just a neutral, some neutral color, you have it. And I try to keep the same colors, like light colors in one, dark in another. But I'll be working, just throw them over and end up with just... Um, another thing that's handy that I've heard some people will do is if you're working on a really nice painting that you, you know, it's going to be archival and all, take all those little scraps, put them in a little baggie, attach them to the back. Because if you, the painting gets damaged, you've got your little palette, whatever you used, right there. You can just look and put it and then heat it, fuse it in with one of these little knives. Another way you can fuse is taking the heat gun and take a palette knife and you don't want to put metal on this because that will scratch it. Only, mm -hmm. only soft things. I mean, it's okay to, to sit something on it, but you don't want to do any scraping on it. But take your heat gun and actually heat the tool. You know, just heat it hot. And, and it'll get hot. And in fact, you can cook. it's a good way to clean off your brush, too. I always keep a stack of paper towels around for wiping, wiping the brush, wiping. I use a lot of those. Okay, and I've got things that are hanging off the edges. I can, I can uh, brush them off, leave them on. Um, but what I'm going to do now is apply a color to that area. And let's do this. Um, what I do at home when I'm mixing my colors in here, I label what my color is on the uh, clip. And because when these colors have dried in the can, sometimes you're not sure, well, was this a burnt orange or was this, a, you know, another color? Mm -hmm. And especially with some of the greens and blues, sometimes they can just look black in there. And then when you start mixing your own colors, I always, I never use, I personally never use pure black. I mix my blacks. I have different shades of black, so to speak, that they're not true black, but they're for my shadows and all.